After not just months, but more than a year of Laker fans waiting for Rob Plink in the front office to pull the trigger on a trade to put together a better supporting cast around LeBron James and Anthony Davis, the day has finally come with the reports the Los Angeles Lakers have traded Kendrick Nunn along with three second round picks in exchange for Washington Wizards' Roy Hachimura. Right off the bat, such news came with a lot of mixed reactions being that Kendrick Nunn was finally starting to crack the rotation while providing some much needed floor spacing and being a player who could generate his own offense. But on top of that, the inclusion of three future second round picks is nothing to scoff at. Especially if fans were to look at the Lakers track record in the draft, to see that the one thing the organization seems to hit out of the park every year is identifying deep draft steals. Nonetheless, looking at this transaction through a lens of an extremely undersized Los Angeles Lakers team looking to get back into playoff contention as soon as possible, having Roy Hachimura in place of Kendrick Nunn in Darvin Ham's rotation is a major overall upgrade. The Lakers have been in search of a versatile 6-8 combo forward since the very moment Kyle Kuzma walked out the door, and if the reports are true that Rob Polinka made this trade with the intention of extending Roy Hachimura this upcoming summer, the Lakers might have just found their long-term depth at both forward positions at what would be a steal of a deal. Although Hachimura hasn't necessarily lived up to the hype of being the ninth overall pick of the 2019 NBA Draft, unfairly being compared to a young Kawhi Leonard at times, Hachimura, still at 24 years old, is already well equipped to provide Darvin Ham and his coaching staff with a tremendous boost on defense. Just last season, Washington Wizards head coach Scott Brooks gave major praise to Hachimura, stating that he was the only player on the roster who was capable of guarding the 1-5. While that might be high praise, which we have yet to see Hachimura solidify into his game, the motor and tools are certainly there for him to excel on both ends of the floor, especially with LeBron James and Russell Westbrook's guidance on offense and Anthony Davis backlining him on defense. So that's one part of what we'll be discussing in today's video, why Roy Hachimura is bound to break out in his time to Lakers whether it be this season or next season as long as Darvin Ham's the head coach and both LeBron James and Anthony Davis are still on the roster. The second part of this video is what should the Lakers prioritize next now that it's become clear the front office is looking to upgrade their roster by the trade deadline. But first let me know down in the comment section below what letter grade would you give the front office for pulling off this trade. Lots of fans were rooting for Lakers to leverage a package of Kendrick Nunn and multiple second round picks to land Cam Reddish of the New York Knicks instead. So who would you have rather gotten between Roy Hachimura and Cam Reddish? First let's take a look at what Roy Hachimura would be immediately bringing to the table before we even get ahead of ourselves and start plotting for the next move for Rob Plink and the front office to make. Laker fans should be expecting Roy Hachimura to get plenty of playing time straight out of the gates as Hachimura should already find himself at the top of both forward positions out of the supporting cast. The Lakers have been limited to playing 3 guard lineups for the majority of the season and it wasn't until just recently that Troy Brown Jr started getting significant minutes with Juan Toscano Anderson right behind him. We talked about Hachimura being 6'8", but his well-built stature combined with his lanky 7'2 wingspan makes him that much more impressive as a potentially elite defender. He has the exact physical prototype a team would like to build a two-way player out of, which is probably why the Lakers front office were willing to give up so many future draft picks for him in the first place. The energy and hustle Roy Hachimura plays with on both ends of the floor is going to lead to him quickly rising up the ranks of Darvin Ham's most trusted guys and up the list of fan favorites as well. Throw a lineup of Patrick Beverly, Austin Reeves, Roy Hachimura, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis, and that would be a unit consisting of 5 players who could all switch onto a multitude of positions while providing some adequate floor spacing on the offensive end. Looking at Hachimura's stats this season, some fans might be underwhelmed by the fact that he's only shooting 33% from beyond the arc, but this season should be taken with a grain of salt. As a result of Kyle Kuzma having a breakout season in his contract year, Roy Hachimura has been forced to come off the bench and has been made very clear the young prospect has been frustrated with the lack of opportunities this season with the Wizards. A dip in efficiency across the board might just simply be a discouraged young prospect being disinterested as part of the Washington Wizards' obvious logjam in the front court. The best of Roy Hachimura is still clearly ahead of us, as he's already shown to be exactly what the Lakers are currently looking for just last season. Hachimura in just his third season was shooting nearly 50% from the field and over 40% from beyond the arc, all while gaining the coaching staff's trust as a Swiss army knife on the defensive end. By no means is Hachimura an elite defender at this stage of his career, rather he's just above average at best. But his physical build, high motor, and picture perfect jump shot gives Laker fans in the front office plenty of reason to believe, if not today, then in the very near future, Rui Hachimura could develop into the Lakers long term solution at the forward position. Hachimura has only known playing basketball for a subpar team like the Washington Wizards, led by all-star Bradley Beal who seemed to always be injured. 
With the pace at which this current Lakers team plays at, all the attention the Lakers superstars draw and the open shots opponents are forcing the Lakers to take, the foundation will be laid for Hachimura to provide a huge boost to Darvin Ham's rotation. The next hurdle for the Lakers to address is how much are the Lakers willing to offer Roy Hachimura this summer. If Hachimura ends up being a one-year rental and the Lakers don't make a deep playoff run this season, then hindsight will reveal the Lakers got the short end of the stick. The Lakers are expected to have roughly $30 million in cap space next season, and if a number had to be thrown out there, no more than $8 to $12 million should be reserved for signing Roy Hachimura, but definitely let me know what you guys think. Finally, there's a question of what the Rob Plank and the front office do next. Now that they've made it loud and clear with the very first move of the trade deadline that the team's actively looking to improve the roster in hopes of making a playoff run. At the beginning of the video, we already discussed how many Laker fans were intrigued by the idea of acquiring Cam Reddish instead, and luckily those trade rumors could still come to fruition should the Lakers really want to continue adding more young, sizable wings to the roster at any cost. The Lakers still have four future second round picks to trade, and if they're going to make the salaries work, either Lonnie Walker the fourth or Patrick Beverly will need to be included. Both Lakers have been key rotational players for Darvin Ham, as Lonnie Walker has become the third leading scorer for the team on many nights and provides some desperately needed floor spacing as his team's best high volume three point shooter. Then there's Patrick Beverly, and while fans might be frustrated with Beverly's failure to be a proven 3 and D reliable veteran, there's no denying the fact that he's a defensive catalyst who's still able to get under the skin of superstar caliber players of the likes of Portland Trailblazers Damian Lillard which we just saw. So on top of it being a hefty price tag trading one of Lonnie Walker or Patrick Beverly, along with at the bare minimum a single second round pick, Laker fans need to be wary of what they'd be getting back in return. Adding Cam Reddish, another young sizable 6'7 wing would be great, but on top of losing the production Lonnie Walker or Patrick Beverly would have provided, the Lakers honestly wouldn't know what they'd be getting out of a 23 year old Cam Reddish who can't even crack the Knicks rotation and is shooting only 30% from beyond the arc. It might just be too risky of a move even for a Los Angeles Lakers team who could use as much size as possible at the wing. But that's where fan favorite Bojan Bogdanovic of the Detroit Pistons comes in. It's been rumored the Lakers have been adamant on including protections around their first round pick, which is absolutely fair considering the salaries of both Patrick Beverly and Lonnie Walker alone add up to be a lot of production lost. In the upcoming weeks though, maybe even days, one of these teams whether it be the Los Angeles Lakers or Detroit Pistons are gonna have to give a little. And as of right now, the reality is that it's the Lakers who are more desperate to get a deal done. So do the Lakers double down with another all-in move by making a trade for Bojan Bogdanovic next? Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think the Lakers should do as we approach the 2023 NBA trade deadline. And most importantly, how would you grade the Roy Hachimura trade? But that's it for a video, take it easy guys.